Hello again. All right, we're here on the north shore of Lake Mead. Uh, this is what's known as government wash. I just found out about it the first time yesterday. I saw this from the other side from the, um, I believe it was called Three Holes, Three Islands. Anyway, overlook on the other side, on the southern side of Las Vegas wash. And um, found it intriguing and wanted to come back this morning and investigate it closer up. Um, now these, uh, what I was calling them before, mini buttes, they're not even as tall as I thought. And uh, after I said that, I noticed that they weren't much bigger than the RV in the foreground. And so, uh, sure enough, uh, maybe 20 feet tall. Um, but what's so fascinating to me about this now in the foreground, the bases are a little misshapen. That that's the lake level normally would be about right there. In the in the background where you see more of the scrub, the green scrub, that's above lake level. So those are more. Um, the bases have not been uh, muddied up by the lake waters. But what's fascinating, getting back to that, is that these are the same shape as what you see on a much grander scale other places throughout the southwest uh, hundreds thousands of times larger and so here we can see exactly how these formed and it's on a scale that we can wrap our minds around the surrounding terrain you can see the soil was laid down by some kind of flood um, and in the wash now the wash is Oh, about like I said 20 feet deep or so and you can see that the um, material on top of these mesas is what it matches the surrounding floodplain and it's slight, slightly sloped tilted and so we can see that obviously they were connected from this whole thing was a flat plain at one time and then water washed through here to uh, wash away the wash. That's why they call it a wash. Um, anyway, the, when the original whatever laid this down happened, I'm sure a lot of this material drained out almost immediately, leaving these little buttes behind. Um, I would say the upper portions, those the vertical portions, were what was there, and then what's been washed away since then is the sloped debris fields that are underneath them making the angular the pyramid type base to it that's the conjecture but um, what we can see is the formation of a butte or a mesa on a small scale that's the important takeaway here this is like a, a little butte uh, laboratory right here we can see it no questions asked so when we look at others that are thousands of times bigger and by that I mean the mass volume not the height you know, the height is hundreds of times you know these are what 20 feet and others three four five six hundred thousand feet you know this is this is analogous to Monument Valley what we're looking at these features and um, it's just like finding a little treasure trove again you gotta how did I know I was going to find this? This has been in plain sight to everybody coming to this boat ramp. And they're all concerned about launching their boats, and that's great fun. I love boating too. And uh, But uh, maybe a few curious people have looked at that and said, wow, that's, that's neat, you know, but it's right here. I don't know if there's names for these. The Park Service, uh, they thought they didn't know about them, but they, oh, it sounds like hoodoos, you know, but this is not quite a hoodoo if you know what a hoodoo is uh, I'm not going to get into that here but uh, similar but not quite like I said it's like a little Mesa Butte laboratory here and we can see exactly that they were caused by erosion so the ones that are much bigger we see out in northern Arizona, New Mexico, Utah they were formed by the same process. You know, they they were, it was all one level 
uh, plane, the tops of those is was with level ground. And uh, when everything came to a rest, for some reason they stayed. They were firmer, harder, and the rest of it just kind of washed away. And it wasn't thunderstorms, you know, monsoon thunderstorms that eroded it away. I think that's a really a stretch to think that rainstorms just kind of wash it away. When the material first settled, it was it was pretty wet, and it it just kind of and viscous, and some of it stayed, creating the buttes and mesas, and the rest of it just went downhill, just washed away. Because when it was originally laid down, it was wet and very viscous. Almost, almost solid, but with the ability to flow still. So let's zoom in on some of this here. Let's Stabilization on. Oh yeah, that's that's good. With this magnification, not only do you need a tripod, but that stabilization really helps. So um, now if I zoomed in on that, would you think it was a couple hundred feet tall? Probably not, because you can see the bushes in the background. But uh, let's back out here. Go up, get these. Here's a really nice example off in the distance. full magnification that's quite a distance away so forgive my uh, unsteadiness I'm trying to get the full picture here I'll just have to that's just the wind folks there we go. Well, that's just incredible. And I'll pan out, zoom out, Oop. and you can see how over here the two are connected. Here's the side of the wash over there on the left side of the screen. That's the edge of the wash. The two are connected and the little Mesa Butte stayed, which is the one in the foreground. area here that we're looking at is normally when the lake is up uh, submerged Seems like pretty much proof positive to me. This is the exact fashion in which all mesas throughout the southwest were formed. This is just a miniature laboratory version that, um, on a scale that we can see and understand. And maybe it's a little too mind-blowing to think that the others were formed in the same fashion, but. <laughs> 